Coming up on Marcus and Joni. He travels around the world sharing the power and the provision of Christ. David Turner opens up about healing and miracles. Well, you need to get ready. International evangelist David Turner is being used by God all over the world in signs and wonders and healings and miracles. But he used to be a skeptic. Yeah, he yeah. was the chief of s- skeptics. <laughs> yeah. I hope he wasn't the chief of sinners. Paul <laughs> said he was the chief of sinners. But anyway, he was at least the chief of skeptics. And he's been a very successful uh, businessman. And I can identify with that because I was raised and Joni was raised in Christian yeah. businessmen's homes. And so that's when I learned about the value of a dollar, uh, be giving to God, mm-hmm. and being good stewards with God's money. And yes. so those are practices that Daystar has done from our very in- inception. If you need a healing or a miracle, you need to get your call in or go online because when David starts ministering, the lines will jam. And already hundreds of people have called. So I'm telling you, if you need a healing or a miracle or somebody close to you does, get on the phone or get online. And let's welcome from Atlanta, Georgia, Evangelist David Turner. Okay, well, Ministry Today is one of the leading uh, magazines in the Christian world. And uh, recently, David Turner was on the cover. And it says, just as we were talking about, (laughs) Chief of Skeptics. David, were you the chief of skeptics? Why did they have that on that cover? I guess after meeting and talking with me, they (laughs) thought I was. But I really was, actually. I was born in a Jewish family. Uh, unfortunately, my father left when I was one, and I had a stepfather who was a pastor. Unfortunately, he was an alcoholic who drank a six-pack on Saturdays and beat us on Sundays. So I didn't oh, want to wow. know about Jesus or the Christian church. And then even in my 20s, by the grace of God, when I walked back through the doors, I got saved. I tithed. I went every Sunday. I helped with the kids. but. It was limited what I could receive or believe. But it was amazing uh, when I was 36 in 2004, about 14, 15 years ago almost now, um, I saw the miracles of Jesus. A pastor prayed for me and he said, what do you know about healing? I said, I know it happened in the Bible. He said, no, no, it happens today. I said, no disrespect, pastor. I'll believe it when I see it. He said, you won't see it. You'll do it. Oh, there's that skeptic coming there out. There it was. <laughs> and, you know, but, but I had two prayers. As much as I was skeptical because I saw so much phoniness and hypocrisy, there are two prayers in my life where, Jesus, I want all you have for me and I want to know you better. And it, I prayed. I was like, Jesus, I'm not a Pharisee. I'm not saying I know better. I'm saying this is what I've seen. You know my heart. Please show me the truth. And with that honest heart, he showed me miracles in my body. Then I started praying for people. He was First, there was a professional football player, Andre Wadsworth, for the Cardinals. Uh, God showed me him. I had never known him. I wound up praying for him. He had two miracles in his knees. He got instantly healed. Wow. God showed me that he'd play again in the NFL. He said, dude, I just want to chase my kids around the living room. He had had 11 surgeries. They wow. couldn't help him. I prayed. He had two instant miracles, wound up playing for the New York Jets. And after that... It seemed like the miracles of God just started. Let me say this right quick. It's okay to be a skeptic. Yeah. But you need to be an honest skeptic or an open skeptic. God, I don't know if you exist. I don't know if you're real. I don't know if you perform miracles today. But if you are who you say you are, then reveal yourself to me. So it's okay to be a skeptic, but you got to have an open mind and an open heart. Is that right, David? What you just said, that is the heart that God is more than willing to answer. You know, when when, when Jesus was persecuted and he wouldn't answer them, it wasn't because he wouldn't answer their questions because they had already made their mind up as to the answer. So when we have an honest question, God always wants to answer us. It's only when we've determined who he is and what he'll do that he's like, okay, you know better. Go with that. So let's talk about that first miracle that happened with you. So this pastor... I would imagine, did he leave a fairly good impression on you initially? Or were you skeptical on him as well? No. When he prayed for me, it was re- this is really funny. When he, he had me hold my hands up in the air, I felt this power of God go right through me. I said, I think this guy tricked me. He had me hold my hands up so long that my I went numb, and that's why this happened. Uh-huh. So I go home that night, and I go, I know how to prove him a phony. I'll hold my hands up. It'll happen again. And when I'm holding my hands up for like 20 minutes, all of a sudden, I felt like something was missing, my keys or my wallet. Like, you have that feeling ever? Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, I realized, 
my past. It's gone. It was wow. instantly healed. Stories that I told, half of them I couldn't remember, wow. and the other yeah. half of them, it was like I had the information without the emotion. So what about your knee? Because I know specifically you, so, you were having problems with your knee. Well, not yet. I hadn't. What happened is within a couple days, I had, uh, I had a disc in my back that had a problem, and I couldn't feel this arm. I woke up, it was a complaint, it wasn't a prayer. Jesus, you could heal this if you wanted to. Instantly it was healed. I'm banging my arm on the granite countertop. My wife's going, wow. Jesus healed you. And I'm like, stop that simple faith. <laughs> so then days later, after I, I was thinking about this football player that I shared, and I said to my wife, I think God wants me to pray for this guy. And, but I'm not gonna do that. I've been around some celebrities, professional athletes, and everyone has this word from God for them. I'm not doing that lunatic stuff. So, so that Saturday I'm running in my gym, I fall down, I tear all the ligaments in my knee. Ouch. I knew that I was going for surgery on Monday morning because 10 years earlier I had torn the other one and I had reconstructive surgery. It was so bad, I'm carried to my room. That night, I finally fall asleep. My wife rubs my leg for two hours. I wake bolt upright at 2 a.m. exactly. I look at the clock. I said, Jesus, first this pastor, then my, my past, my back, Andre Wadsworth, and now my knee. Are you trying to show me something? I said, Jesus, couple things here. One. I've been around you long enough, I'm not bargaining with you. But if you heal this knee, I'll get surgery, it's not cancer, I'm not gonna die. But if you heal this knee, I will know that I know that I know that you heal today. And one more thing, I'll go find this guy Andre Wadsworth and pray for him, I'll know you were speaking to me. I put my hand on my knee, in the name of Jesus, power of the Holy Spirit, heal my knee. I jump off the bed like a pogo wow. stick, I couldn't move. Wow. And I'm amazing. jumping up and down, screaming at the uh, top of Jennifer my lungs. What's thinking about all this? You know what, I use Jesus because she's from Tennessee, I love Southern Joe's, I'm in the South now, because it's because I love Southern people. But I said to her, I said, I'm devastated. She goes, isn't that bad? I said, no, I'm devastated because I've touched the hem of the robe of Jesus. My life will never be oh, the same. Wow. The next morning is when I went and found Andre Wadsworth. I found this guy, prayed for him, went to the church where I knew he went to, and that's when he had two miracles. And that year, there were 60 miracles. I would write down names, dates, places, when I could keep track. And then at one point, I met my spiritual father, and he laughed at me, and he said, David, a day's going to come where you won't even be able to remember the miracles that happened last week. And that happened about a year later, I couldn't even keep track. I would just touch people, headaches would be healed, digestive tracts, fourth stage cancer, people get out of wheelchairs, Amazing. everything. Mm -hmm. What I love about David is he has that simple faith. He doesn't try to figure God out. He just hears what God says and then he obeys. That's what I've tried to do all of my life. You need prayer. There's an anointing is growing in the studio. The presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is here in abundance, and that means more than enough, more than even what you need. So call the number or go online. We've got a video of someone that David prayed for, a lady in a wheelchair. Let's watch this together and, and make that call in, in the name of the Lord. Amen. We're gonna pray for it, and then as you feel led, I'm gonna let you, we'll see what you feel in a few moments. You can try to walk on it. Amen. Amen. Nothing he can't do. Amen. If he can do that, he can do this. There's no difference. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, in this dear mother, in the name of Jesus, for your glory, God, I heal the ankle. I heal the foot. God, the screws even turned back into bone. In the name of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, all the swelling be gone. By faith, Lord Jesus Christ. God, by faith. God, by faith. Just very little weight. Just see how it feels. Just see how it feels. Hallelujah. By faith. Does it hurt? She's not feeling the pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've not Thank stood you. on this foot since the accident. I have not stood on this foot since August 17th. Hallelujah. I have not stood one time. The doctor said, not wait, bear it. I couldn't stand. But I'm standing today. Standing in the, in the name of, of Jesus. You want to walk a little more? Sure, I can walk. Let's walk. Hey! Right here. Right here. Hallelujah! 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 Well, that's why you need to call or go online for yourself or somebody close to you, Joni. I've never done this before, but when I was sitting here, I saw this so clearly. I, and like I said, I've never done this, so get ready, camera operators. Camera operators, there's... There's some of you here that you need the Lord to touch something in your body, and I just want you to lock your camera down. 
Lane, the director, be ready for this. I just want you to lift your hands up there where you are behind the cameras, all the camera guys. I don't know, yes, the victory guys, lift your hand. And David, as you feel led, will you just pray for them? I don't know what, what the need is, but I know God's wanting to touch them today. Wow. Yes, and, and even as we uh, minister in a little bit, we're going to pray for everybody. But right now, Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, you are the healer, Jehovah Rapha, Exodus 15, 26. In the name of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God come, the power of God come, Holy Spirit anointing right now. Every person with pains in their body, from broken hearts to broken bodies, right now I heal every sickness, I cast out the demonic spirits, I set them in freedom, I break every chain. In the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, right now, kingdom of God, power of God, touch them now, right now, in the name of Jesus, I heal them and set them free. Yes, Every area I speak I blessing yeah. in their life, in the name of Praise Jesus. The Lord. Amen and amen. 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 And that's for someone who's watching as well. I know the Lord can show you uh, the lines are jamming, people are calling.